You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Why do you read? Part two The Genocide of the Canaanites. In the first podcast in this series, I argued that why we read the scriptures matters enormously. If we read asking questions about history, for example, according to the ancient Israelites or Judeans in the street, was God married? You get one answer. In this case, yes, according to many ancient Israelites or Judeans in the street, Yahweh was married to Asherah. Listen to my podcast, Why Do You Read? or Was God Married? If you don't understand what I'm talking about here. But if we ask a theological question, not a historical one, or even a literary question, and not a historical one, like, does the Bible, as religious scripture, say that God was or is married? That's the theological question. Or, did the authors of the Bible believe God was married to Asherah? That's the literary question, or we might rephrase it, does the Bible text say that God is married, or was married? You get the opposite answer. No, no way, no how, certainly not. So, why we read matters. How does this impact on the problem of Bible passages that instruct Israel to kill or wipe out the Canaanites? I think it matters like this. The theological question to ask of such passages is, does God desire genocide? Or, did God desire the genocide of the Canaanites? As a theological question, the answer, if asked of the whole of Scripture, has to be no. For a start, there are Bible verses that make it clear that God does not desire the death of any of his creatures. As 2 Peter 3, 9 puts it, The Lord is not slow about his promises, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. And, quite clearly, the story of the life and death of Jesus is understood by Scripture to mean, as John 3.16, that favourite verse of many evangelicals, puts it, that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God loves the world so much, so much wants no creature to perish, that in Christ God dies for us. Or as Brueggemann points out, right at the start of the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, when the facts warrant death, God insists on life for his creatures. A God like this could not desire genocide. A God who does not want any to perish. A God who gives himself so that his creatures might live. A God who, when the facts warrant death, as Brueggemann said, insists on life for his creatures. Such a God could not desire genocide. So, what do we do, theologically, when different parts of the Bible seem to contradict? Well, we give primacy to the thing which is repeated time and time again, to the thing which runs like a thread through Scripture from beginning to end. And in this case, that thing is that God does not desire the death of any creature. That's why an understanding of those passages which suggest that God orders genocide must be wrong. But if we're asking the theological question, much more difficult is to ask the historical question. And that I've tried to do in other podcasts and will try to do in other future podcasts. God bless.